Thanks again for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast, including YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every single day. Hello, I'm Stephen Willis from the Locked On Ole Miss podcast, and we're joined by Brian Smith, the Florida football scout. And before we get started with today's show, I do want to let you know that LinkedIn is the college football recruiting sponsor across the Locked On Podcast Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. Brian, a lot of stuff happened this week. A Kylan Deer pulled the trigger and committed to Ole Miss. This is a big running back commit for Ole Miss because we've talked about how important it is for Lane Kiffin to keep a player like that at home. You've mentioned that he is potentially the number one running back in all of college football, and he wears number five, right? When I see number five playing running back, I don't think Keelan Williams from LSU. I think Reggie Bush. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kylan's my favorite running back recruit in the class of 25 uh, Reggie was one of the best players I ever watched in high school. I, I used to talk to him quite a bit. That was that was rarefied air. I don't know. <laughs> there aren't many Reggie Bushes walking around. Oh, yeah. Th- those don't <laughs> exist much. <laughs> a Kylan Deer, though, between the tackles, outside, and making guys miss, he's all three. And his up, upper echelon speed, like when he really wants to hit the go button, he's about as fast as a running back is going to be in a short burst, even after contact. His balance after he gets hit, Stephen, and then hitting the gear again is rare. Um, I compared him to one of my buddies, to Eric Dickerson, in terms of like how his upright running style, he's not as tall as Eric. Eric was probably 6'2", 6'3", but that's who he reminds me of, and that open field speed. If he gets by his shoulder by it, it's over. You can strike up the band, brother. It's six. There's nothing nothing you can do about it. Now, now he plays in Southeast Mississippi, I believe. It's either a 4A or a 5A school. I don't know what the classification is for equipment now because I've changed it about six times in the past three years. So I'm not 100% <laughs> sure. But equipment was in my district when I played high school football, and I was, I was at a 4A school. So I can assume that it was kind of similarly there. Now, is the competition in Southeast Mississippi – going to be enough to where he has a chance to go up from the number 34 player in the country that's popping up on the consensus to get start getting into those teens, start getting into those real solid consensus five-star numbers. I think he's a, a kid that's top 50 conservatively. Mm-hmm. Um, the problem is, like you said, because of where he's at, I, I might go see one of his games just because I like it. Um, I don't cover Ole Miss particularly, but I just want to go see him play. So I need to find a game where he's not playing against a bunch of slugs and, and, you know, he's going to run for 300 just because there's nobody there. But I also want to see him just because it's him. It's different seeing a kid live. Mm-hmm. You put yourself in the end zone and they're coming at you and a kid breaks one. You you really get an idea and a feel. How well does he understand the blocking scheme? Can he make guys miss in short space? And then, of course, the fun one, open field speed. I'm really confident on that last one, Stephen. I'm really confident I'm going to like that last one. Yeah, and like I said, I'm not completely sure which district Quitman is in at the moment, but you're probably, I would imagine, you might get a chance to see him play Oak Grove or somebody like that, one of the Hattiesburg area schools. Well, that would be ideal, obviously. Yeah, a really good player. Now, he isn't the only special athlete that Ole Miss has in the news at the moment. They got an RPM from, I think, Zach Barry or somebody at on three for with Jamarian Morrow. He's a He's listed as a running back from Germantown, but this is not a running back. This is an athlete. This is a guy that gets put on the depth chart as a weapon. I told I told you the other day, he's a Percy Harvin-like player. Now, I'm not talking about top-end speed and all of that stuff. I'm talking about how he stylistically plays the game. You see a lot of that number one running around on the field. Jet sweeps, running back, slot, screen, like the basic tunnel screen that everybody runs, very few teams will have a defender that make contact with him and even comes close to getting him to ground. This kid's film is blast. And he plays Germantown. It's east part of Memphis. That's a program that's always had some players. He's, you know, he's going against greater Memphis competition, but he makes guys look bad. So, and again, it's just entertaining. How a team would use him is up to them, but I think Lane Kiffin would be a great fit. Obviously, Kiffin and the Rebels recruit the Memphis area pretty hard, so it's a fit. 
And, you know, especially Ole Miss is, what, an hour away from Memphis, give or take. It's really the Memphis home team that's not University of Memphis, but it's the SEC's kind of oddball city because it's not close to any one school, so a lot of people claim it. Tennessee, you know, Ole Miss and Arkansas all recruit that hey, hard. That's that's the city that got Alabama in trouble back in the day. No, it is. I, I mm-hmm. used to talk to that young man. Stories mm-hmm. at a later date. But <laughs> point is, oh, yeah, that was a bad deal. The point is still the same. He can play no matter where he's at. It wouldn't matter if he was in Miami, L.A., Dallas. It wouldn't matter. This kid can play. And Lane Kiffin, if you give him running back like a Kyle Deer, then you're running jet sweeps tomorrow. I mean, like, that's that's ideal for what the old rest, Ole Miss Rebels want to see. Yeah, whenever um, I worked at Rivals back in the, like, around 2010, that time frame, um, I worked in the video department, as many can imagine, and sometimes film would come through that was just fun to watch. You just enjoyed watching that. A couple of players, for example, and that was Noel Devine's high school film was – Oh, my God. Div- yeah, it was amazing. Lake Sea Strunk in Texas, amazing. J- Jamarian Morrow, there was, a li- there was a little bit of echo of that just fun because it was like dance, dance, revolution, watching him move on the football field. He moves at a different speed mm-hmm. and he moves laterally, more importantly, mm-hmm. better than just about anybody you're going to find. He makes that first guy miss because they're going to lunge and he's going to, he's going to make a darting move and they're going to miss. Mm-hmm. So that's a lot of fun. There was at least one play on his highlights to where the guy would, if it would have been a normal player, would have completely missed the tackle, but he accidentally got a leg because of the lateral movement of Javeria Morrow. And a hit. I, I, I bet nobody was more surprised than that DB from whichever Memphis high school that was. Every now and then you get lucky. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> so I had a conversation, I think it was on Thursday's podcast. And I was mentioning three names that Ole Miss is recruiting in high school football. And I think that – If Ole Miss gets one of those three, any of these three, they should be happy. But if not, they should just punt on high school recruiting and take a transfer portal quarterback for security with Austin Simmons there or Walker Howard, whoever wins that job, and then you have um, A.J. Maddox. But the three quarterbacks that Ole Miss is actively going after is Notre Dame commit Deuce Knight, who we talked about on this program several times, Southern Methodist University commit Keelan Russell, who we've talked about on this program, many times and Houston Longstreet the California kid that you know I've heard rumors that he's crystal ball to A&M I also heard that Auburn's feeling pretty good about him at the moment so but Ole Miss is going after these three guys and my thought is if you can land one of these three you take one of these three if not punt go to the portal I wouldn't disagree with that um, I, I'm pretty sure Knight will end up at Notre Dame because he's still recruiting for him mm-hmm. but anything's possible with the Mississippi kid the Keelan Russell kid, I just watched again. He plays for Duncanville, which is a suburb of Dallas. Best program in the state of Texas. He's already won a couple of state titles. That guy has tremendous upside. He's just growing into his body. He needs to add weight, but he can really swing it, and he's used to elite competition. They play 6A ball in Texas. They fear nobody, and they destroy just about everybody. They score 50 points a game. And then, of course, you got Longstreet. The kid from California plays at Centennial, arguably the most – prolific passing team over the last decade, producing quarterbacks and just being a pain in the butt offense. That's that program. And he's really talented, man. He's he good can too. spend it, man. He can spend it. I, I would take him in a heartbeat. Mm. You know, I yeah, think but, he's the safest of those three, to be honest with you. Yeah. But if you look at these guys, you know, and you put them on a sheet of paper all together, Knight, Russell, Longstreet, they might have little strengths and everything's they're going. But if you look at the basic, I don't know the the framing of a quarterback. These guys all fit similar frames um, with Lane Kiffin and what he's looking for. And that gives you an idea of kind of how he's thinking this position is going to go. Well, he's going to look more RG3 than the typical prolific pocket passer, like somebody like Walker White, for instance, at Auburn. That, That's the point. Yeah, it, there's a certain style, a certain guy that appears to be their guy moving forward. I think Jaden Daniels has changed it a lot. Wayne likes to try new things, and he went more and more spread as he got developed in his career, but he's also adapted a lot of his pro concepts from when he was at Southern Cal and with the Raiders. He mixes really, really well. 
I know there's one defensive coordinator from the SEC thinks Lane's the best play caller because he mixes it like that. If you just throw in a little spice, meaning a quarterback that can take a four-yard run and turn it into a 20-yard run, in addition to those passing and running plays in the RPO game, I'm guessing that Lane looks at it like, well, there's really no way we can't score 30 on anybody in any given game. And most time, probably going to score 40. And he's right. Yeah, and you look at what they're doing defensively um, and bringing in players in the transfer portal. It wouldn't surprise me that if 2024, the defense only gave up about 17, 18 points a game. And if that defense gives up 17, 18 points a game with what's happening on offense, they're not going to lose very often. No, that's a team that, like, bottom in, they should win nine games this year. Hmm. That's how I look at Ole Miss. If it's going to, it's got to happen this year, man. I mean, you're not going to get Walter Nolan for more than a year. It, it needs to be this year. That's that's special, dude, by the way. Hmm. You've got to be able to do Perkins and all these guys lining up in one group. If they need a little luck with injuries, like every team does, I'll grant you. But offensively, you know they're going to score. And now they can play a little more field position to do things differently because they don't have to worry about, well, we know our defense isn't going to do anything. we got to score. Well, they could play it a little differently now. They, they've got more cards to play with. It's pretty intriguing. And they have the talent to be able to – this is going to sound very weird for anybody that's watched Lane Kiffin over the last, I don't know, decade, but they have the talent to slow it down from time to time. Yeah, four-minute offense is okay if you can run the ball. They've mm-hmm. got some good running backs. they got some size up front. If you've got a lead, there's nothing wrong with making the other team's offense stand on the sideline. Mm -hmm. That never goes out of style. If you get to the end zone, you still get to the end zone. You just want to give them as few of possessions as possible while still moving the football. Hey, big interesting thing at practice this week. Ole Miss got a visit from Mario Nash, the offensive lineman out of Kemper County. Good football player. Ole Miss has had him on campus two or three times in the last couple of months now. Jimothy Lewis was on Ole Miss's campus like four times in a row before he committed to Mississippi State. So I don't know how much that means, but Mario Nash on campus is better to have him than not. Eventually, hopefully they can, I don't know, finagle a commitment. Everything that I see pictures when I do a Google image search on this athlete, you always see him on Florida State visits. So I'm assuming that, that Florida State is more of a factor than anybody even really knows. Auburn's going to be in there. State's obviously going to try and get this player. I, essentially, everybody's going to get this player or try and get this player. He was one of the best players I've seen this year at an Under Armour camp. Good balance, good power. He's pretty well determined that he's he's going to be a tackle and he's just fine-tuning his craft he loves it and that's a kid that's got all the offers because of it he could play pretty early in the sec needs to add just a little bit of weight but he's pretty close to where he needs to be already so yeah he'll have offers from everybody and his official visits and how his recruitment plays out probably going to be the long haul how do you think the official visits are going to go this year since signing day has been moved up to essentially it might still be in December, but it's like in the first part of December. It, yeah, it does change it a little bit because a lot of kids, if they're out of their state playoffs or they finished in November, that first weekend of December, they take an OV. Well, that's signing day now. Mm-hmm. So they did that because of the portal. They don't want the, the signing day and the portal to be open at the same time. And to that point, that was the busiest month I've ever had last year. And they're yeah, both, yes. it's, It was impossible. Nobody could yeah. keep up with it. So I understand it still causes some problems like for the kids that go to a state, like in Florida, the state finals are going to overlap. That is a nightmare. You know what I mean? Like some states, it's that way. I'm curious because some of these kids still need to take visits and they got head coaches that really don't want them going away from practices late in the year, et cetera. I'm guessing some kids are going to have to try to force themselves to take visits earlier in the season or even in just the summer and figure it out because they're not going to have the time during the end of the year. Yeah, it's a situation to where, let's say Ole Miss and Mississippi State's playing on Thanksgiving night. You That weekend now becomes an official visit weekend where everybody else is playing football and you have an unbelievable advantage that you wouldn't normally have. Yeah, that, that, yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, they, Take advantage but, of the prop opportunities. Yeah. We'll see what happens. I'm assuming that July is going to become July and June are going to be a much bigger thing in the officials category. 
I would and, agree. I would and, agree. And, and some games. I, that That's why where I think it's going to go. The people that would normally go in December are probably going to end up going in July or August. That's what the coaches want. They want less recruiting time. That's, well, that's got, what this is all about. I got a question for you. Well, you mentioned all these state championship games are after signing day. We're going to have any opt-outs? If it happens in high school, I don't even know how to answer that question. You know, I really feels, don't. Yeah, it, it feels like that there's a better chance that it would happen in high school. If a player is going to sign, if he signed in his school um, on December 1st or whenever that signing day is, he's going to enroll on January 6th. That's one month worth of difference. We're going to have some opt-outs. Kids that get banged up a little bit to think their team's going to get smoked in the final. I don't think many kids would because they want to play for their school, but I get it. It's mm. it's awkward. Um, I, I don't know what football players play football. That, that's what I think. Football players play football. Yeah. That sounds simple, Stephen, but it's not always so. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, but – that's that's the world I live in and from time to time. Anyway, Brian, thank you for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast, including YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Brian Smith, the Florida football scout. What have you got going on this weekend, buddy? Uh, I'm going to be at uh, Auburn spring game, and I'm going to be hidden on the road for the next month and a half through the end of May, man. it's uh, This is my time. Uh, it, it's rather busy. Just Going to high schools, going to camps, seven on seven, Elite 11, you name it. I'll be on the road. Outstanding. Thank you very much, buddy, and we'll, we'll see you next week. All right, buddy.